Okay, so this is my kitchen sink demo that I did last week at Dreamforce for CloudStock for the hackathon. And it uses um, Spring and uh, uses the REST API and OAuth 2. So I thought it might be useful for, for some people to see how the, the flow works and then see the actual code. So for the hackathon app, it basically was a period careers application. So it kind of displays the careers that we have available. And then it uses box.net to store the um, PDF for the job descriptions. I use force.com to actually store the jobs that we have open. And then we use OAuth 2 for authentication. And then we use the REST API for fetching the data out of there. I do also store some metrics with MongoDB. So every time you view a job or send out an SMS about the job or look at the PDF, it stores that on MongoDB. And then I also send a job to a friend via SMS with Twilio. And then the whole thing was built using Spring STS, Spring Roo, and Spring MPC. And then it runs locally on a TC server. So that's kind of the application. Um, if you want to get started with the REST API, one of my favorite new developer evangelists, um, Pat Patterson, has a really good article on that, getting started. He helped me out. I was, I was using actually cookies with mine, and he switched me over to the session variables. Um, so that helped much more than what I was doing before. So here's, our, here's our, my developer org, and I have all of our jobs that we have available in the, this developer org. So if we look at one of these jobs here, and this is our CloudWorks lead interaction designer engineer and we you know had location there the job title the URL for the PDF on box and some of the duties and some of the skills and the salary and benefits and that's basically the same thing for all those jobs um, so that's what we're grabbing the data out of the Salesforce out of this developer edition to view those so, so let's go back to the application again so here's the application the first thing we're going to do which typically you wouldn't do if someone's viewing your jobs externally but for the demo I have it where the first time you come in here you're going to do the OAuth and authorize against your Salesforce account. So let me go ahead and log out of here first so you can see the whole thing. Um, log out. There we go. All right. So let me close this now. All right. So now, first time they go and view the positions, if they haven't authorized with Salesforce, it's going to take them over to Salesforce. It's going to allow them to log in with their credentials. And it's going to read them back, to, redirect them back to this application to show them the list of job op opportunities that are available. So let me go ahead and, and watch the URL up here. You'll see it automatically redirect. So it takes you to Salesforce. Let me log in here. Watch again up here. You'll see the redirect back to my application. And there's a list of jobs. So now I can go ahead and view, let's just see, we'll go down here to 17. I haven't viewed this one yet. We'll view job 17, and we'll see all the information about this job. This is a technical consultant for mobile. We have this job available. Let's go back one to the, uh, we'll do 105. This is a CloudWorks Social Engine, Software Engineer API Solutions. And you have a friend who may like this. So let's go ahead and tell this, tell this a friend about this job. So I'm going to click on this right here. It's going to launch a new window. So I've already pre popped it with my, with my Google Voice account number and a description. So I'm going to hit send SMS. Sends the SMS out. I'll go back here to the list of jobs that we have available. And that, I guess we're going to see my SMS come in a second here. It hit my phone already, so it should hit my Google Voice account in a second here. And I'll go back here to, what was this again? This was, um, so there is the Google Voice account. And you can see here is my SMS met message right here that came through telling a friend about this job. So if I go back to 105 again, I can go also go ahead and print this job. There's a PDF that's stored on box. And I can print this out. And then the last thing we want to do is, every time we open this and send an SMS out or print it, it tracks this in Mongo. So I have a, a host of Mongo DM, Mongo HQ. And this is job 105, I believe. So we'll go look at this is my Mongo collection, and I can go down here and see all the jobs we have available. Let's see, where's 105? Here's 105. You can see there's five views, one message, and one download. So let's go back here again, and we'll go back and we'll view 105 again. And now let me refresh that. And job 105, now there's six views. So it's updating these metrics on Mongo. So that's the application itself from the front end. I'll look at the code real quick. So everything happens, um, there's, I have everything in two controllers, just it's easier to demo that way. 
So the, there's a OAuth controller and a job controller. The OAuth handles the whole OAuth for you, and the job controller lists all the jobs and provides all the functionality you need to interact with these jobs. So the OAuth controller has basically two methods. Actually, there's three. There's a, an int method that handles all the setup, all the variables you need for Salesforce. And I've taken out some of these variables, and uh, so these aren't the exact credentials that you need, but uh, it works for here. So the first time you come through, you go into the OAuth start, and it checks for an access token in the session scope. If it if it actually found one, it just forwards you over to the jobs. If it doesn't find the OAuth token in the or the access token in the session, it redirects you and it redirects you to Salesforce. So here's the OAuth, OAuth URL, which is set up right here. So then once you log into Salesforce with your credentials, it reroutes you back to this OAuth callback, and this is all set up in the remote access in Salesforce. It reroutes you back there, and then you start grabbing all the variables out of the uh, JSON payload that was sent back. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to parse the body, and I'm going to grab the access token and the instance URL. I'll need those for the calls into Salesforce, and then I will set those to the session scope so that I can use them on different controllers. And then it forwards me to the jobs. So if I go over to the job controller, you'll see the request mapping for job.list. It looks and sees if my array list of jobs is empty. If it is, it grabs the access token instance URL from the session. It creates a new client request, adds the instance URL and the rest of the path that you need to do a query to my get method. I add the access token to my header of the get method. And then I actually just prepare my SQL query. So here's my SQL query. I get in there and I add that those to the query string parameters in the get method. And here I go ahead and make the request. Execute method. It brings me back a response and I output the response body. And then down here I actually create the, uh, the JSON objects and create these domain objects right here, a job object, by parsing out the values in the JSON payload. And then I add each job to the array collection so that way I can use them with future references without having to make this rest call every time I want to look at the list of jobs. And then I just go ahead and show the job list view. So the job list view looks pretty simple. Just a JSP page where I have a collection right here of jobs that I iterate over and display the job name, title, and location. And again, that's this page right here. All right. So the next thing, the display looks pretty simple also. So the display page looks very similar to that. Actually, let's look at the controller here. The controller has the, the request mapping for job. We pass over an ID and then display. It grabs the job out of the um, array list by ID. It increments the view with MongoDB and it um, passes the user back to the model view for this ID. And this is the display right here. So you see here's our job object that we pass back and we just output some of the values in there. One of the other neat features down here, I'll scroll down, is the Twilio part. The Twilio is very simple. We show a form first. So here's the form where they enter in their information. Actually the form is right here, sorry. That's the wrong one here. So the form is right here where I set up an SMS message object and I set the phone number by default and some text and then I add that to the um, object to be outputted on the screen in the GSP page and then I grab the, uh, the job by ID and pass that back to the view and here's the display for that page oh that's not the display for the SMS that's for the display for the job and then I go ahead and I send it and the sending is pretty simple it just passes off all the information to the send SMS message method where I just send the job, the phone number, and the message. And the Twilio part is actually pretty simple. It took about 15 minutes to implement Twilio on here. So here is the method right here where I just call the Twilio client. I, I create the message that's sent out. I actually prepare the, uh, the, the body of the message and everything to be passed over to Twilio as a map. And then I call the, I guess the response client and I send that out. So it's pretty simple to actually implement Twilio in there in about 15 minutes. So, so that's the whole application. I'll post the code also, and I uh, look forward to any comments.